Hello chess lovers, Zoran here and in this video I want to share with you one of the most amazing games ever where we are going to see how strong pawns can be. On the white side is Soviet chess player Eduard Gufeld and his opponent is Czech chess player Lyubomir Kavalek. This game is from 1962 student Olympiad. Gufeld would earn Grandmaster's title in 1967 and Kavalek in 1965. Meanwhile, this is year 1962, Gufeld is on the white side and he opened up with e4. Kavalek answered with e5 and after a few more moves, Rui Lopez appeared on the board, bishop c5. Black is choosing the classical variation, which in good old times was the main line. c3, white is preparing to establish a classical pawn center and in return, black is choosing a very aggressive line which is known as Cordell Gambit. Knight f6 is considered to be a quiet continuation, usually this is what the players are choosing. But in our game we see f5 which leads to double-edged positions. d4 white is proceeding with his idea, f takes e4, knight g5. Not the strongest move, theory recommends bishop takes c6, and if d takes c6 then knight takes e5. This is how the theoretical line goes. Uh, but instead in the game we see knight g5. Now we have a hanging bishop, that's why black moves it back on b6, and d5. Well it was better to play knight takes e4, but in the game we see d5, and in return we see a very aggressive e3 move. Black is making a peace sacrifice on move 7. Uh, in here, bishop takes e3 is good, but in the game we see knight e4, after which gradually black is starting to gain initiative and uh, white has to be very careful. Knight goes on f6, knight takes f6 check, g takes f6, and finally at this point white accepted the peace sacrifice. He takes f2 check king d1. This is already a mistake after which black is gaining a huge advantage. Better was putting the king on f1 from where the king later can cover a key g2 square, but from afar coming up with that idea is not an easy task in th and in the game we see d1 with which uh, the king is later uh, being exposed to checks from d file as well. Bishop goes back on e2, bishop e6, queen h5 check. So white is forcing the exchange of queens, but this is something which can't help white. Against the piece, black has three pawns, right? But still white needs to complete the development, something which requires time. b3, bishop d5, there it goes, black is coming after the pawn on g2. Now can you imagine how important it was instead of playing king d1, play king f1. Bishop a3 check, king e6, bishop g4 check. By switching the bishops into the game, white is managing to protect the pawn on g2, but uh, that's just a temporary protection and now the pawn is going to drop. Knight d2, bishop takes g2. Gradually, black is intensifying the pressure and is winning more material. Rook f1, rook d8, king e2, and now question arises how should black proceed? Please pause the video and try to find Kavalek's next move. Ready? In here, the talented Czech chess player went for an exchange sacrifice. How do you like this beauty, guys? White knight is removed and now there is nothing which can stop the aggression of black pawns. Bishop f8, white knight wants to play b4 and then bishop c5 in order to, in order to neutralize black's dark squared bishop, which is playing a key role in this attack. b4, rook g5. If only white could get rid of this bishop, then could stop the pawns as well, but Kavalek sees everything and with rook g5 he's acting against Gufeld's idea. Bishop c5, and now what to do? 
It's black to move. How will you proceed? Ready? This time we see rook takes c5. The second exchange sacrifice is on the board. Black has a bishop against two rooks, but the bishop is not alone. The king, together with the pawns, will now march forward. f3. Rook b4. But no one pays attention to this rook, you know. Rook d4. At the cost of an exchange sacrifice, white is finally managing to block the dark squared bishop's diagonal, but it's too late. After king f4, we have a resignation because black pawns are unstoppable. The interesting thing is that black wins while still having the eight pawns on the board. This is truly fantastic, right? What I want to do right now is to go through the game while stockfish is on. Okay, we see f5, d4, f takes e4, knight g5. As mentioned earlier, at this point you should go for bishop takes c6 and then knight takes e5. Yeah, in here let me tell you that knight takes g6 is not that good because of this knight f6. If here then rook g8. And uh, black is successfully managing to neutralize white's attack. What if here then bishop g4 is coming, right? Yeah, interesting. And yeah, well, white is facing serious problems. You know, you have to point them. You have to find a move like c4 in order to open up the c3 square for the knight. Okay, in the game we see knight g5, bishop b6. Now knight e4 is a decent continuation, but we have d5, e3. Yeah, e3 looks very strong, something which the engine suggests. And now instead of quiet bishop takes e3, which can lead to simplifications uh, white is playing knight e4 there comes queen h4 queen f3 queen h4 is again angie's first choice not really uh, but uh, still it's a very strong move although the engine may choose its opinion you know this is not a final decision Okay, in the game we see queen h4. Anyways, Kavali keeps on making top moves. Knight f6 is on the board, which interestingly is not engine's first choice. You can first go for e takes f2 and then play knight f6. We have knight f6, takes, takes, and d takes c6. White is accepting the uh, p sacrifice. There comes e takes f2, king d1. The king d1 is already a huge mistake, better is king f1. After which, yeah, white's position is starting to collapse. There comes bishop e6. I really love how Kavalek is playing, you know, with Angie's precision. Uh, let's not forget, this is year 1962 and it would take him like three more years to become a grandmaster, but he is playing this game at the highest level, you know like a top grandmaster. Interestingly, why not bishop f3? Then e4 is coming, right? Yeah. If here, then e3 is coming. And what if again bishop f3 takes, takes, rook g8, rook g1, right? That's why we see bishop a3 check, king e6, bishop g4, f5. Now the avalanche is rolling down. Knight d2. And the pawn on g2 also drops. Rook f1, rook d8. King e2. And rook takes d2. Yeah, rook takes d2 is among Angie's first choices. e4, bishop f8, f4. Just no way. Actually, after king d1, there is already no chance of saving the game. Looks like that rook g5 is not the strongest move, right? Better is king e5, but what if bishop c5? Then check here. Okay, you will then uh, here. Takes, takes. b6. Hmm, interesting. Well, 
this is interesting really so black can hold this position and uh, and then try to make use of the pawns yeah this is interesting Instead we see rook g5, but what's wrong with rook g5, bishop c5, and rook takes c5? Yeah, this is something which we, the engine was missing, right? Rook takes c5 is actually winning. Will we see a change in evaluation in here? Yeah, and now already rook g5 popped up as a top move. Yeah, and then it goes up, you know, it goes up. Yeah, I think that rook g5 is better than... Uh, King g5, yeah, and finally we see rook g5 as Angie's first choice. Good job, Mr. Kavale, good job. Yeah, it was not that clear how it was black going to realize the advantage, especially from afar, seeing that was not an easy task, but rook g5 is Angie's first choice move. Good job, Mr. Kavale, even my stockfish 14 couldn't see that move straight away. There we have it, rook takes c5. Interestingly, the only winning move. Bishop takes, rook b1, and there comes the f pawn. Rook b4, king f5, rook d4, and now it's time to win the rook and play king f4. What to play? If here, then you are losing your rook, and it's over, and what else? Yeah, just no way out, you know, here, e2, it's over, that's why finally after king f4 resignation followed. So this is it, dear chess lovers, hope that you enjoyed this marvelous game by Lubomir Kovalek. Uh, feel free to share it with your friends as well, let them know about this beauty, and in the end, let's also solve a chess puzzle where the task is to win with the white pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video.